All right, so we begin all of our podcasts in the same spot. And the question is, well, one, uh, your full name, your full job title, mm -hmm. and what makes your job, t uh, someone in your job resilient? Um, my name is Sherwood Taylor. I am the Director of Workforce Development at Atlantic Cape Community College. Um, and what makes me resilient is actually being able to provide services to the um, residents and businesses in our um, community. So as a Director of Workforce Development, um, critical thinking is very important. I have to plan things. I have to look forward. So we, well, let me back up. We, we, we renamed our department mm -hmm. um, Workforce Development. Why? So we moved from continuing education because we found one that our students see continuing their education as credit or non-credit. They don't, they don't see it as just a non-credit function. Mm -hmm. So I want to continue my education. So I was getting most of the emails for our credit courses, uh, hmm, which was interesting. And we really have to focus now on what the person who leaves us is going to be doing five years from now. It's okay. not enough to prepare them for the job. We have to prepare them for the future of what they're doing. And we take that very seriously here. So when we say we're going to develop a program, it's, well, does our, our healthcare partner need that person just for the next year? Mm -hmm. Where are they going to go from that point on? So now we have the conversations of how is that going to fit into our degree programs? How is the person going to crosswalk over? Mm -hmm. So we have those conversations under um, under workforce development now. So the development part of the workforce mm -hmm. piece um, is really important. So that's the, the critical thinking and the planning and adaptability. Wow. I mean, <laughs> sometimes we have to turn on the dime. I mean, sometimes, unfortunately, the situation in Atlantic City, when the casinos closed, mm -hmm. I mean, we have been called upon to do think, to do training in three days in some cases. So being able to adapt to really quick uh, resolutions to things and also being able to adapt over time when in a lot of professions in education, it takes a couple of years to get something done. Mm -hmm. We don't have that. We don't have that luxury. We have to be able to adapt very, um, very quickly. Um, self-awareness, obviously, because I'm just brilliant and I'm self-aware. <laughs> um, no, no laughing. No, who? <laughs> it wasn't here. a denial. It was a laughter uh, of, of reflective <laughs> learning. Um, we we produce workforce development solutions based on what has worked in the past. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, what has not worked in the past. We do take those lessons very seriously. And do you I, have an example of that? Oh, I can't even begin <laughs> to tell you. Um, when we talk about out-of-school youth, we have a lot of, of youth folks that are out of school. There's a lot of funding mm -hmm. to get them in. It's a difficult population, obviously, because they're out of school, which means they may have finished or they may have not finished. Um, just had a conference call today about doing a program where um, leadership thinks it's one way, and the reality is... Um, out of school youth don't respond to specific things. Like people think, we'll give them a stipend. It's not one of the things for, that for what? For, yeah. Right. For for showing up. That there's no value in that. There's no respect in 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 yeah. that. There's no so, there's a sense of, uh, inside of, uh, uh, accountability. That kind correct. of you have to correct. More correct. Correct. So those things that we've learned in the past, we just eliminate them from our proposals or eliminate them from um, our grants. Um, previously, we've had night programs training in healthcare that were three nights a week. We've learned, I've learned over the last four years, adults who are working cannot do three nights a week. Mm -hmm. They can only do two. They don't show up for the third night or they want to leave early. Mm -hmm. So those types of lessons, um, we definitely, um, yeah. you know, that, that historical stuff that, is, that has happened. And collaboration, I think, is probably ties everything together. We work very, 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 very closely with our... Um, with our partners in healthcare and mm -hmm. technology, and we do listen to them. Now we do provide um, certification training, so there is only so much influence that an employer can have because we're we're designing the training for them to pass a nationally accredited certification. Right. So where one employer would say, "Well, we want them to do more with you know injections," and another employer will say, "Well, our people don't do injections. Same job title." Mm -hmm. We have to say to them. We can appreciate that. We're building a foundation for you. And what you do when you get the, the student or the employee onto your job site, you may have to further educate them based on what you're looking for. I want to go back to the five, sort of that five-year vision. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I would, 
in, you know, maybe before I would have walked into this room, if somebody sort of like put a microphone in front of my face and asked me about this, I would have said, this is the, that's the responsibility of the professor, right? Sure. That like the, the person who's delivering is sort of that sort of has, yeah, has the, the is, is the one who has to deliver that information and sort of sculpt, not sculpt, but you know what I mean? Like that, that, that is responsible for that student's education. I'd really love to hear kind of how that five, sort of that five year vision where, even if you have a specific example of when you, mean you thought of this how time. we plan five years out. Yeah, like thinking student. about that student's thinking about that student's career five years and from now. Not just the job. Yeah, and knowing that you know that this piece of tech may not be used anymore. It's Correct. being phased out. Stuff like Correct. that. Correct. So when you think about um, when you think about kindergarten teachers and when you think about you know people who do secondary education and post secondary education and professors, mm -hmm. they're they're really tasked to get to a, an objective in the now. Mm -hmm. Like, what is the objective for my for my medical assistant instructor, right. for her students? Her mm -hmm. objective is to teach them what they need to know to successfully pass that mm -hmm. certification and then be able to go out and work, right. right? So when you talk about the instructor or the professor or the mm -hmm. adjunct, mm -hmm. that, that's what they're tasked with. Mm -hmm. As an administrator and the connection with the partners, it's my responsibility Mm -hmm. to make sure that that medical assistant training is not obsolete in five years. Mm -hmm. So what are we teaching them? So the employer could say, we don't need them to know that. We don't need, they don't do that here. We don't, we don't need them to know health records, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. They don't have to be MRHs or that whatever they are. something that came they to don't, mind. Right. Yeah. But it's my job to look further and say, you know what? You don't think you're going to need it, but we're, we're including it in our training. Because the trends that we're reading, the jobs that we're looking at, says they're going to need it. Right. Mm -hmm. You may not use it, but they're going to need it. Is that stuff that's going to? That's not going to be on the exam too. So that's class time. Are you thinking even in terms of like stuff that that? I mean, is this no? You're right. It, it may not, in some cases it may not be on the certification exam, mm -hmm. but in some cases it may be something on the exam that they think we should take out. Nine times out of ten is something that it's not on the exam. Mm -hmm. That we want to give our that we want to give our students to make them more to more so we have medical assistants in the field now mm -hmm. that have moved on because of our our program. So just as a quick snapshot, yeah. our program is kind of different. I guess other people are doing it too. Mm -hmm. Our students leave with four certifications okay. when they finish our medical assistant program. They're certified medical assistants. Mm -hmm. They're certified phlebotomists. Mm -hmm. oh. They're certified EKG technicians. And they have a CPR certification. Oh, wow. And now we're also giving them something called CPI, Crisis Prevention and Intervention. Right. This organization teaches you how to not interfere, but to deal with nonviolent confrontation. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. So we've added all of those right. things to the program. Was that, did that come from an employer, especially that last one? Did that come from? That was a, the last one was a re direct request from an employer. That's amazing. Right? That's really cool. So the other things we looked at, okay, so we've made our, our students. Uh, medical assistant certified, but what if they can't find a job doing that? What do they do? Right. And in that medical certification, they learn a little bit about phlebotomy mm -hmm. yeah. to pass the certification because they have to be, they have to do some blood draws. Right. They have to learn a little bit about EKG. So to answer your question, five years down the road, what have we done? We said, we're just going to expand our phlebotomy training enough mm -hmm. and expand our EKG training enough mm -hmm. so that our students can get certifications in those area. Now that covers that student for the next five years. Are you finding instructors that can do all those things? Are you bringing in different people to teach phlebotomy? I mean, I know Alice Torres. It's very, it's very difficult. It's, okay. it, it's challenging to find, it's not challenging to find people with the certification. Mm -hmm. It's challenging to find people that I would put in front of my students. Really? So it's very, that, that part. It's not just the technical part of it. Oh no, of course not. It's the so it's that soft skill thing. Yeah. What do you? What are you? So what are you looking for? I mean, uh, now you've, uh, you might be a genu yeah, genuine, yeah. genuine professionals that really believe that they are in service to the student. That the student is not in service to them. Can you think of somebody off? I mean, uh, I can, but okay. yeah. <laughs> like, what? What is? Is there? Is there something that that person may have done that you've heard and kind of overheard? Like that person? Yeah, like, yeah. How they refer to students? Yeah. How they refer to students? How they refer to a group of students? You know, referring to students as them or a group of students as them. Mm -hmm. um, that person is not in service to the student. They think the student is there so that they can get a check, and they're very quick. They're very quickly moved on to other 
things. Mm -hmm. They don't stay around us very long. But that's not why you're here. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm coming out, I'm coming kind of fresh off of a conversation with somebody who teaches construction, and she was just kind of off the cuff, like, "Oh, I had somebody who wanted to learn how to, you know, wanted to be exposed to how to how to use dump trucks." So I was like, I call up, my, I pick up the phone. He's sitting in my office. I pick up the phone. I call, like, "Hey, listen, I got somebody here that might want to shadow you." And yeah, okay, fine. It's like, all right, so you're gonna go to the job site tomorrow. You're not gonna come to class. You're not gonna see me. You're gonna go to the right. job site. Like, just sort of like really simple. Like, again, it's it's not like embodying that though. Yeah, there's a it's lot. It's a service to the student, but yeah, it's also and it's and it's it's kind of informal too. Like that's, I mean, we're we're kind of on this sort of uh, storytelling mission, and it's like right. finding the stuff that doesn't have forms and paperwork, finding all those things that right. community, right. especially community college instructors do, where they'll just pick up a phone and call somebody and they know. Yeah, and that's you know? the, the relationship that they manage to cultivate is interesting. Well, and that, and, and empowering them different. to do that. Yes, you have to have a structure. Sure. Obviously, you have to have a structure. Sure. But you know, when a student says to you. I would really like to stay at that clinical a little while longer because I'm not feeling confident. Okay. Well, in a lot of cases, I've had instructors say, well, no, your time is over. Not the people I have now. People I have now will pick up the phone and say, my student really liked it there. They want to continue to learn. Can they continue? Right. And the answer is yes. Oh, if, if they have to move, if they're not, if they don't realize that they're in service to the student, they have, they have to go. Do you feel like you are, uh, would you use that same terminology to talk about your relationship with your, with the, with partnerships and employers on the other Absolutely. side? Absolutely. Absolutely. The part, the, well, it, it goes back to development, mm -hmm. you know, it goes back to workforce development. So what's my responsibility to the partners? Mm -hmm. My responsibility is we're the community college, we're in your service area. So my responsibility to you is to make your job easier. Mm -hmm. to make it easier on you to do what you do in our community so that people can work here and they can find gainful employment here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's part of a, the development word for me is big, mm -hmm. you know, because I've been in meetings where people say, well, it's not the, it's not an issue for you. Oh, but it is. But that's the, no, 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 because what's going to happen is if we do it incorrectly, I'm going to be the one you're going to call to fix it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. We're going to be the one you're going to call to fix it. So that that development piece for workforce development is that's where it transitions. The workforce is the student, and it trans over. You know, we deal with the we deal with the chambers. We deal with I mean, any employer it doesn't matter how big or small they are. That's the development part, and that's we see that we're even the instructors. We're in service to the students. We have an obligation to the employers. We have an obligation to the community. Are the, are you reaching out to them? Are they coming to you? How how is both? The both? It's both. If something new comes up before we actually design a new program, we do that whole environmental scan. Mm -hmm. We figure out if there are qualified instructors, um, if people are interested in hiring for that. Because sometimes you'll get a request from one specific employer, mm -hmm. and especially in healthcare, it may be it may not be cost effective for the employer for us to mount that training mm -hmm. based on the equipment that we would need. Right. So we do see both. Okay. We but you had that. examples of uh, employers coming to you asking for specific kinds of training and then having to turn around and produce that. Um, Atlanta Care. You can. Yeah. yeah. So Atlanta Care, for example, um, has been a partner with the college for years. They. Um, it's a long story. We want to hear the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. we do. <laughs> so they've been a partner for years. So I'm just going to go back about two years ago, um, and this may be a good story about how we've changed things. So we were approached because they needed um, monitor technicians. The folks okay. that sit in the room remotely and watch the EKGs of patients in intensive care or in the hospital. Okay. Okay? So one person would sit and watch six monitors, mm -hmm. right? So they needed people that could do that. So they came to us. Now, we had published and we had a uh, electrocardiogram technician, not specifically a monitor mm -hmm. technician. Technician. Is, that, is there a hierarchy to those two? Yeah, the, the monitor tech really needs to have more um, interpretation skills okay. than the EKG. The EKG person hooks you up, yeah. mm -hmm. they get the printout, and they hand it off to somebody. They have to understand interpretation, mm -hmm. but they give it to a doctor. Right. Mm -hmm. A monitor tech watches the monitor. When they see something, there's a protocol at that medical facility, whether you have to call a nurse, you have to, and in some facilities, 
you call the code. You call the floor and say, really? code whatever in room because of what something. you have seen. I mean, it's obvious on a monitor if a person's having a heart attack. Right. Sure. There's no question. So we were asked to do that. It took me a little longer than they wanted to develop it. One, do the teachers I have, do they have the level that they need mm -hmm. for these additional interpretations we determined that they did. Mm -hmm. So we added hours. So what we did was we added hours to our EKG program, mm -hmm. changed the name from EKG technician to EKG slash monitor technician. Mm -hmm. So when you left, you were prepared to be a EKG technician or a monitor technician. So we did that. 2012, give or take, you know, a year. Mm -hmm. So we put that in place. What happened was people stopped taking EKG because they didn't want to be monitor techs. Hmm. Ah. Okay. So Atlantic Care comes to us and says, we really need monitor techs. We really need monitor techs. I explained it to them. They started a program called the Scholars program that we have. And they are, what they're doing now is they are identifying potential employees and putting them oh, in the program. I see. Right. And they're going through our training program. Yeah. That's actually a lot like the, the thing at, uh, up in Hartford, the access Capitals. Health. Yeah, the Access Health thing where they're right. sort of interviewing people and saying, Pre, right, right. pre-identifying. Yeah, pre so right. then fast forward, we did that for about a year. Mm -hmm. Now we're in the process of I'm going back to my EKG program. Now that monitor tech training mm -hmm. is now going to be a customized option for Atlantic Care. Okay. So we did did this. Mm -hmm. Now it's to the point where they need things that are so specific, it cannot be an open enrollment right. program for anyone off the street to take in with the Atlantic Care folks. Mm -hmm. There we're moving to a more customized option for them. So that's an right. example of how yeah. how we work. And that, that's happening now as we speak. So we'll be able to go from, probably in the spring, we'll be able to offer them that, cool. that um, customized option that they want. Let's talk about, um, you, you me I mean, you mentioned sort of the change from the, 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 the sort of con no longer using the word continuing yet because- the We're transitioning. Transitioning. Yes. <laughs> transitioning. Very yeah. hard transition. There's sort of the-, the I can't imagine. We want to hear more about why it's a difficult transition, well, yeah, honestly. We, uh, if we could walk, yeah, continue to talk about that, certainly. And then talk about sort of how, uh, again, there's at least a couple different job titles you know, how we're changing. Yeah, okay. the restructuring that's kind of happened or renaming of things. Okay. Kind of so over the last couple of years, we have, we've tried to eliminate the term non-credit because the word non is, has a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The training that my students in our healthcare, and I'll just keep going back to healthcare. Mm -hmm. The training that my students in healthcare receive is the equivalent to what our academic students are receiving. So we kind of, our deans, you know, we kind of wanted to walk away from that. So we started that general transition of saying workforce development instead of continuing education. Continuing education. Is this novel, by the way? I mean, I, I mean, just no, drops, it, but is, is this, there are well, a lot of other schools doing this? Like some, in, yeah, yeah. You will see that there are vice presidents of workforce development okay. in okay. some institutions, but it's not a hundred percent yet. Okay. And there are colleagues that will argue with me that, you know, mm -hmm. continuing education is an old term that a lot of schools have clinged on to and they're still using it. Okay. So the non-credit language you're trying to get rid of. We that. yeah, if you say non-credit around here, you get you get a Ooh. funny look. But I like I mean I just like the great. fact that like the, the the I mean it's like a, I guess a business using business language, but your customer it's about doesn't use it. The student. Exactly. <laughs> like, it's about the student. It's like really non-credit continuing education. It's like yeah, I just I I would I would like a job. I'd like to get certified in this thing. Right. So I can and they don't know the job. difference. The students no, don't, they don't care. Don't care. They don't know that I work. They don't know who I report to. It, it, right. It so matter. So with the leadership, we started moving away from that. Okay. So what happened was um, we had some shift. You know, position shifts on April fourth. It was finally made official Yay. that the director of workforce development, that is me. I report directly to the Dean of Career Education, who okay. for the world is an academic dean, mm -hmm. who reports to the Vice President of Academic Affairs. Right. Okay. So when people say, well, you know, C, they say C8, is it workforce development? Who do you report to? Well, I ultimately report to the Vice President of Academic <laughs> Affairs. Right. So that tells you what they think of what we do. Right. That's where we report. So what we did was on April 4th, um, we restructured based on what we wanted to see happen. So two specific areas that we wanted to see change a little bit. The first one, the easiest one, is um, our relationship with our businesses. Mm -hmm. 
right? So we have an umbrella area we call business and education partnerships. Under that, um, we created a senior, we realigned some job titles, mm -hmm. and we now have someone who is called the Senior Manager of Strategic Alliances. Ah. Hmm. And what she's responsible to do is just that, is to look at the development with the businesses mm -hmm. and bring people together right. so that we can apply for grants or work on projects. And strategic alliance doesn't mean that we absolutely, that it's, they're paying us for something. Mm -hmm. It could be, well, this new company's in town, let's meet them and let them know we're here. That's a strategic alliance as yeah. far as we're concerned. So that's her, that's her focus. Um, we also added something called a workforce solutions um, coordinator. And we added something called an education solutions coordinator. So when I explain the other piece, those will get, so those two folks are going to be our external people. Mm -hmm. So okay. they're going to go out into the businesses and some community colleges may call them sales reps. <laughs> yeah. They may call them account reps. Mm -hmm. I don't, we don't believe in that because we're not just trying to sell you. We're trying to help you. Mm -hmm. So we will send the solutions coordinator to you because that person has solutions. Right. <laughs> The fact that you may have to pay for them is just the way the world works. Sure. And the education coordinator, um, the education solutions, I actually call her an administrator, is going to do the same thing. She will outreach the business, but she's going to be more focused on the what, how do we connect Atlantic Care to the full line of academics, through the full line of workforce development. That's what she's focused on. So that's what those folks are doing. Do you see um, this... I mean, what you're describing, I mean, I, I'm sort of maybe stuck on the five-year vision thing, but, like, this sounds like a growth thing. Like, this is, this is, I mean, what... Development, maybe? Yeah, we'll like, what is again? development? Let's write that down. <laughs> Start the, that is, is there, I mean, if this grows at a rate that everyone wants to see happen, I mean, it sounds like that the, um, like, this could be what, you know... Atlantic Cape really kind of it like well, what you tell me what is the growth vision for the for this sort of well let me give you the yeah. before I get to oh, that, yeah, let sorry, me give you yeah. the other piece yeah so we added that that education the business and education piece mm -hmm. the other piece we've done a great job here with um, prior learning assessment as you know our vice president is a prior right, learning assessment right, right. guru uh, we've done that and with help of the NRC and this TAC grant it's really we've really helped move it forward mm -hmm. so with Michelle's help my assistant director with the grant you know we've been working on some stuff little did I know that because we had the grant, you know, go to conferences, learn it, meet Nan Travers, mm -hmm. becoming an expert in it, that it would be my responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> so what the vice president had asked when we did the reorganization was he wanted um, prior learning assessment to fall under workforce development. Because if you think of the concept yeah. mm -hmm. to develop a workforce, it's everything. Mm -hmm. It's everything that they need. So in that area, we have a we have an area we have a program coordinator for what we call college and career pathways. Mm -hmm. So very quickly, college pathways are any program that is designed to connect or link a student to a credit course or a credit track. Mm -hmm. okay. okay? That's what we've done with that. The career pathway is the same. It's any program that is designed to connect the student to a certification track or to get them in. So the two examples are, we now have something called um, College Pathways ESL Level 3, right? Mm -hmm. So what that means is we've eliminated our 070 and 072. Mm -hmm. When the ESL student scores at a certain level, right. they come into the workforce development fee-based mm -hmm. ESL course. Okay. When they leave that course, they should test into oh wait, into that college course. It connects right to it. It's connected. Okay. Right? When we talk about um, the college pathways, we just did a pilot and we're going to be continuing an ESL, ESL level three. They were given um, customer service certification, guest service, excuse me, American Hotel Lodging Association, mm -hmm. guest service training, and front desk training for two industry credentials. So their ESL course was contextualized with the language and the processes, yeah, right? Yeah, with the language and the processes of guest service and 
front desk. We start. We did that pilot with nine students. Mm -hmm. They all passed their certifications. So that for us is a career pathway program. Right. So that's part of college and career pathways. And now, the front fa what I call the front facing piece of prior learning assessment mm -hmm. will is what this program coordinator will have. So she will be responsible for those programs that I just mentioned what we're calling competency verifications. Most people call them challenge exams, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Change of language, too. Ch we're, I'm changing the language because I've, I've, I've learned that, yeah. I've learned that um, faculty are very uncomfortable with you challenging what they do. Yeah. Hmm. But if I can prove to you an equivalent to what you do, you're, we, the conversations with them, it, they're a little more, they're a little more amenable to that. Mm -hmm. So it's going so, from challenging exams to certifying. That's the terminology we're using. Okay. So in most places, you'll say, do you have challenge exams or right. test out exams? Right. They'll say yes. Mm -hmm. So on our forms, we're going to say, we're calling them competency exams. Okay. And we're also doing um, competency skills evaluations. Okay. So this program coordinator is responsible for that. We're going to be do testing and assessment. So we're going to bring in CLEP and Dante's and ACE, right. you know, all those different ones that we can use to mm -hmm. help people assess their prior their prior learning um, portfolio development we have something here we call a career portfolio so a person can develop a career portfolio and have that evaluated that will go through this um is that going to be like a course for that or is that a one-on-one -on -one sort of like a we are just we are right now just designing that and we're looking our focus is on a one-on-one -on -one oh, nice. session with this coordinator so that when you come in, you don't have to wait for five other people to show up right. to take that portfolio course so that you can move forward. Okay. So we're going to do that. And then we are thinking about using an external partner to do um, portfolios for coursework that the person cannot find validity anywhere else. Mm -hmm in competency exams or, you know, those types of like things. Like to evaluate what they Exactly, okay. exactly. So we're, we're doing that. So then when I go back to our, our education administrator, the other thing that we're doing under PLA that will be kind of coordinated with this person working with this education solutions administrator is we're going to reach out to our partners and mm -hmm. say, we'll just use Atlantic Care. Mm -hmm. Atlantic Care, tell us about the training that you do. Well, we do supervisory 101 and it's this amount of stuff. We will... Take that information, mm -hmm. we will go through it, and we will assess it for college-level learning and assign credits to it. Mm -hmm. Then once it's approved, mm -hmm. on a list, it will say Atlantic Cares Supervisory 101 equates to this course. That's so great. now the employee from Atlantic Care, when they come, they'll already know mm -hmm. that, oh, you can provide the documentation that we list for that particular in-house training you can come to Atlantic Cape and cross for a full through. three credits for a full yeah. three credit. Whatever the court, whatever the credits, whatever so that it equals. Okay. It's very yeah. transparent, though. I mean, <clears throat> at what point are you having conversations with students around PLA? Because I mean, we've talked with the director of PLA. How did I forget that that's his real title? <laughs> about you know <laughs> how important it is to have that conversation. And so I'm just thinking about like you know, those non-credit, taking away that language, but also saying what you've done is valuable and you can get credit for that. Correct. And we see value in that. So how are you having those kinds of conversations? Because it sounds like transparency is... Well, that's the, that's the start of April 4th, having okay. this new position and setting up the systems, right. if you will. Yeah. You know, in a lot of places, um, companies can do things for years and years and years and be very effective at it. Mm -hmm. But how do people know you're doing it? And what's the front? And so when I say front facing, we're talking about a website, yeah. you know, in our guide. So that's the stuff that we're marching towards sure. developing so that the training of our staff can be if they hear someone say something, hey, you might be interested. In it, and then they get you connected with this person yeah. who has this knowledge that could probably get you on a faster um faster path. Yeah, I think it's interesting to just think about the culture at the institution where we're promoting prior learning assessment at, you know, at the very first conversation that we're having sure, with this Sure, sure. And, that, and that's so going to be a, a, a change in how people are advised right. and, you know, what Admissions, it is. And when they come absolutely. in, where are they coming in, if credit absolutely. and non-credit are gone, who's yeah. having those conversations. Yeah. And, if, and, you know, if someone came in now and said they wanted it, they would get to someone. Okay. But we need that structure and the flow, sure. and that's what we're trying to make a little seamless. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seamless for people. And a lot of our, you know, in healthcare, 
a lot of our programs are being evaluated mm -hmm. as a result of our grant. Right. So our students can now just, you know, and I'm, I'm taking the word crosswalk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, we love it. Yeah, I'm making my own language. Um, <laughs> using crosswalk to say, if you take that training here, you just walk it across the hall. Right. And it gets on your transcript. Where in our PLA in our PLA handbook, you have to have taken twelve credits here to apply any PLA credits. Mm -hmm. But if you take workforce development, we want the standard to be you walk across and do it. Mm -hmm. The community college, the version of the story that I knew 20 years ago was, you know, that's where you go if you want, you're biding your time before you go to transfer to a four-year sure. school. Um, but like this, you know, the getting involved with this grant and what this grant is trying to do in terms of having people sort of discover, you know, different entities on, on certainly on the student side, but certainly the, the instructor side staff side, administrative side, and employers realizing that, wait a minute, I need something and I can use that. I, down the street is the school and I need to get, like, it's a sort of like, sort of looking at yourself and then looking across the way and going, Absolutely. that like, this is what we should be useful. Like, we should use each other for this, like, because it's a relationship Absolutely. that could be made. Reflection. That like, there's that, there's, it's a theme that I think has popped up in a couple different, uh, more than a couple different places since yeah. we've started sort of talking to folks with microphones. You know, it's like that the, the kind of looked, people just kind of looked around and realized that the, whatever, again, whatever they may have thought what community college was for, it's, it's now, it could be for this amazing thing that you just described. Right. And if you listen to your customer. Yeah. That's, that's really what it was. It was like. They're the, talking. So, you know, my perfect example <laughs> was in a conversation. Do you think banks decided to allow us to take pictures of checks with our phones <laughs> and deposit that check because they thought it was a good idea? Absolutely not. The customer said, this is what I want. Right. And now what you see is, they're pretty much all doing it. My credit union does it. They're the last ones to do it. Sure. <laughs> but it's the customer driving. And when we say customer, we're talking about the individual student mm -hmm. and who? The employer. That's who's driving how we're going to change. And I think if you, you know, I hate to use this term, I hate to use it, but <laughs> if you think outside of the box, as we, you know, hear people say, mm -hmm. you know, you think about if your focus is you're not giving up the academic integrity mm -hmm. or the quality of your training, then do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then do it. That's not outside you of know, the box. That's like changing the class from yeah. four days a week to three days a week is not going to change the integrity. That's, that's but not... people are afraid of that. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, we're in an environment here, luckily, where we have the ability to to make those changes and design those things. And we're working on some stuff now that I cannot mention, but we'll, Ooh, we'll invite you back. Secret. I don't know. I'll turn off the microphone. Now, Click. Yeah. It's off now. now it's, still ever off it's still recording. Yeah. It's still recording. Yeah. But no, I mean, there, there are things that you just, you really, you know, hate to say, think out of the box, but, you know, what? What does the customer want? It, I, I think, you know, I've been doing grants here for over over 10 years. And, you know, and I say in meetings, they're resources. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, sometimes you do things because you're required to. Mm -hmm. You know, we've done things under the TAC grant because we were required to. Mm -hmm. But oh, so happy that we did. Mm -hmm. Because we may not have done them mm -hmm. otherwise. Right. We may, you know, you know, bringing our paramedic program back, buying equipment. We may not have done that because we may have looked internally and said, we really can't do that the right way. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's just, it's, I'm speechless now at this point. It's just, <laughs> it's just the thing that you have to do. Yeah. You can't call yourself workforce development and not develop. R&D, you have to talk to people. It's not just, I mean, there are things that, that we do that I necessarily, you know, would say, mm, I don't know about that. But, you know, I have an assistant director, Michelle, who's like, sure what? <laughs> Come on now, you know, and you have to listen to those other folks that are external from your organization or who may be connecting with people on a different level. And you have to listen to the end user, the student. You have to listen to them. And sometimes they don't come to you and say, we can't do three days a week. You have to visually see that. 
I have to visually be here and see them when they come in. Mm -hmm. You know, you can hand them a survey. You're not going to learn anything from that. But when six students are sitting in the cafeteria studying and you walk up and you're saying, so how's it going? <laughs> and they really drop the mic on you and tell you how it's going. Mm -hmm. We're struggling. Why are you struggling? Six days is a lot. Well, I mean, three days is a lot at night. We can't do it. I mean, that's, you know, and, it, you know, I, you know, my other administrators, I challenge you <laughs> <laughs> to, I mean, you have to have those conversations. Yes, surveys. We do have to survey. We do have to take the, we do have to do all that stuff, but nothing beats introducing this introducing yourself to the student mm -hmm. and going where they are. I was going to ask, is, like, is there any, I mean, again, there's sort of the survey, survey stuff, but is there time that they have? Because, I mean, I have on my list of notes something like resume writing workshops and interview prep and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Those sound like sort of, uh, they're, they're formal in the sense that they're scheduled. But, like, those sound like those opportunities where you can not only get good sort of job work, sort of, like, get them focused in on their way towards sort of thinking about job-related things, but you can also have that kind of conversation you just Correct. described. And learn about their experiences. And yeah, like, I mean, the, the, the how is how has that interview prep stuff been going? Well, right now, um, I am usually the one that's going in and teaching it. Okay. But, unfortunately, can't keep doing that, so I am trying to find someone um, to actually do that. But I my thing with them is just being around. Being going by and you know seeing them when they're in the hallway, going into the so class. they know you. There you're. Oh, yeah. There, yeah. yeah. What are you most proud of at Atlantic Cape? That you know. Whether it has to do with us or not. Yeah, like or even it's sort of what are you most proud of, and then kind of what what have you maybe even what you've learned on you know like sort of what are you most proud of, and then what have you kind of learned maybe even about yourself as a as a worker. I guys? think um, I think as an institution. I think I'm the mo uh, one of the things I'm the most proud of is, you know, regardless of what department you go to or who you go to talk to, they are real. We're not perfect here, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that. But I think if you walk up and you're doing something and it's for a student, you get no pushback. You just don't get pushback. Somebody is going to help you. Someone is going to help. If my coordinator goes to do something and they can't, she'll get me and I'll call the, you get, you know, you may have to go a level or two, you know, because sometimes people have to follow the rules, mm -hmm. but you get no pushback. You can always serve again, you know, if it's within the means of, you know, we can't give students like aid that they're not entitled to, but <laughs> if it's something that's viable for the student, you just don't get pushback. Mm -hmm. you, you, you really, really don't. Mm -hmm. our, our, our leadership, you know, they get it. They get it. I, I would probably have to say that is one of the things I'm the most proud of, working for an institution where everybody seems to be on the same page. Yeah, do we struggle? Of course we do. Do we have meetings where we don't agree? Of course we do. But ultimately, it's what's best for the student. How do we get this done so that the student can have the best experience? And we do. Have, that is probably the thing I'm the most proud of. Mm -hmm. um, what was the other part of the question? It's in terms of something you may have discovered um, since kind of, again, sort of the, the thinking about sort of the impact of the grant, like, is there something that you didn't really realize about even just about yourself as an employee or a, a person where you're like, I really kind of got to take that part of myself and really sort of use it to and use it with students or use it with instructors or something? Hmm. I would have to say I didn't realize that um, how I... I didn't realize that how I conduct myself made that big of a difference to the students mm -hmm. until they started telling me. What did they tell you? Things that you were doing that really resonated with them? Yeah, you're, 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 you did what you said you were going to do. Mm -hmm. You're a man, you're, you know, I went into classes, you know, and I met them. And I said, listen, if you need anything, I'll, you know, if, first you go to your instructor, then you go to the coordinator. But if, you know, or if it's something that you want to keep private, because that happens, come to me. And I believe it or not, I've had students come to me and we get it done. Because an act, you know, for us, and if a student is having an academic problem, that could turn into a personal issue. Mm -hmm. And if they have a personal issue, <laughs> it turns into an academic problem. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, we, we, we so I, I, I think that, that I did not realize by, I mean, I've always been that way. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you I can do it if I can't do it. Right. I tell you to come to me and if I can fix it, I will. And if I can't fix it, I'm probably going to be able to find somebody who can, or I will tell you, listen, that's outside the scope. We're going to have to get you help someplace, which we've done. Um, but I think learning that from students saying, 
that's really important that you do. And I think I think the other thing, um, insisting from the insi- insisting from the team that they deliver the highest quality training that they can. It's not okay to do ninety nine percent. It's just not okay. You know, I, I you know, I a perfect uh, perfect example. I won't mention the teacher's name, but no, no. I took over in two thousand and twelve. And um, I walk into the office one day, and my instructor was at the copier with her textbook making photocopies. So I looked at her and said, what are you doing? Well, I have a class next week. I have my class next week, mm-hmm. and I need, you know, I need to copy the first couple of chapters. Could I ask you why? Oh, the books usually don't arrive. We usually don't get the books till like, the third week of class. So I called the coordinator over. I said, where are the books for her class? She goes, right there on the shelf. It was the first time in six years that that teacher had her books the day the class started. <laughs> Ta-da. It's not okay mm-hmm. that a student starts the class without a book. Mm-hmm. It's not okay. So being a, so if you, if you expect that from people, you have to make sure as an administrator that you can give them the tools. You know, you know management one-on-one. Are your people trained to do what you're asking them to do? That's one. Oh, that's number one. And number two, do they have the tools to do what you're asking them to do? And they have to have them. So those th- those two things, I think, um, for me, I probably took that answer way around the block. But nope, that's, that's exactly where we wanted you to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think those things are. You know, having teachers say to me, "Yeah, you're it. You're it." It's like, nah, get out of here. No, <laughs> you have no idea. You know, we can go in the class. I mean, I don't do you feel like you taught some teachers some stuff? Like, have they learned? Like, they learned. Anything? Oh, I think I've been. I, I think I've influenced not just teachers. I think I've influenced some some of my colleagues and some of my administrators. I think I've. I think I just like they've influenced me. I think sure. I've. I've influenced them. You know, I say to them all the time, "Why are you here? Like, why are you here? Because you're not here for the money. So why are you here? You really need to examine that. Why are you here? You don't have the right." to mess up somebody's life. Mm -hmm. So by you being late, you're messing up. By you not having the answers correct on your exams, you're messing up. So let's have a conversation later. Why are you here? And I think we, you know, they've influenced me and I've influenced, you know, I've influenced them. I think they like coming to work because they know what they need. They like question like, well, how many of the new cuff things do you need? Well, I really only need one. See, when you say I really only, that means I need more, but I don't want to ask. How many do you need to make it easier on the students? I need four. We have the money for four, so guess how many we're getting? We're getting five (laughs) in case one breaks. (laughs) One breaks. (laughs) Excellent plan. Right? Yeah. So I think being able to instill those, and they're not afraid to come and ask. Because when people are constantly told no, they just stop asking. They stop asking for everything. It doesn't matter what it is. If I tell you no, you can't have that blood pressure machine. When something else comes, well, they're just going to say no. But then that affects the student. 